we have reached the momentous time when we are ready to define graph neural networks. We start with a brief parenthesis to discuss pointwise nonlinear functions. That a function is pointwise or a pointwise nonlinearity means that when applied to a vector x, it is applied to individual components without mixing entries. More precisely, the result of applying the pointwise nonlinear function sigma to the vector x, which is a vector made up of entries x1 through xm, is equal to the vector that stacks sigma of x1, sigma of x2, all the way through sigma of xn. It applies the nonlinearity to each entry individually. Entries are not mixed with each other in the application of sigma. The result that appears in position k of the vector sigma of x is sigma of xk. It is pertinent to emphasize that pointwise nonlinearities are sort of the simplest nonlinear function we can apply to a vector. They are pointwise, applied entry by entry. Pointwise nonlinear functions are used in convolutional and non-convolutional neural networks alike. The most widespread is the rectified linear unit that zeroes all the negative components and retains all the positive ones. The hyperbolic tangent characterized by a sigmoid graph is another choice, and so is the absolute value of x. There are a dozen more choices of pointwise nonlinear functions it is generally accepted that different choices make marginal differences. They're not so important. An important observation to make about these three specific pointwise nonlinearities and other possible choices is that they all reduce variability. The ReLU eliminates the variations of all negative components. The hyperbolic tangent saturates large entries. The absolute value makes all negative entries positive. In the parlance of signal processing, this is called a demodulation. It generates signals with more energy concentrated in low frequencies, in signals that change more slowly over the graph. We close the parenthesis and return to learning with graph signal. In the previous video, we studied how to learn with graph signals using graph filters. This is shown in this block diagram where the input graph signal x is multiplied by a polynomial in the shift operator matrix. A limitation of graph filters is that they have limited expressive power, a fact that is in turn due to their linearity. Graph filters can only learn linear functions of the input x. A first approach at a function class C that can learn nonlinear maps is the graph perceptron. To build a graph perceptron, we process the output of the graph filter with a pointwise nonlinear function sigma. That sigma is a pointwise nonlinearity is a key restriction. As we have just seen, it means that sigma is applied to the vector x component by component. A graph perceptron is determined by the choice of graph and filter coefficients. Therefore, the family of graph perceptrons can be written as a family that is parameterized by the shift operator S and the filter coefficients H. As in the case of graph filter, the coefficients H are trainable, but the graph S is given prior knowledge. This is then the block diagram of a graph perceptron. It composes a graph filter with a pointwise nonlinearity. The fact that the nonlinearity is applied component-wise implies that graph perceptrons are minor modifications of graph filters. Nevertheless, given that we will use perceptrons to build GNNs, it warrants a repeat explanation. In the block diagram, we begin with the input graph signal x, which we send into a block where it is processed with a graph filter. 
This is the same graph filter that we used before. The output of the graph filter is Z, but now, instead of becoming the output of the learning parametrization, it is fed into a pointwise nonlinear function sigma. This produces the output function phi. At the risk of overstaying my welcome, I emphasize that the nonlinear function sigma is pointwise or elementwise. It applies to the filter output C individually. It is for this reason that we categorize perceptrons as minor modifications of filters. With the graph perceptron parametrization, the learning problem looks the same as before. We still search for the optimal set of filter coefficients h that minimize the loss averaged over the training set. It's only that now the function phi is not simply a graph filter. It is a graph filter that is post-processed with a pointwise or elementwise nonlinearity. As before, the graph shift operator is part of the parametrization, but it is not part of the optimization. Although we have emphasized the conceptual proximity of filters and perceptrons, there is a substantial difference. The addition of the nonlinearity allows the perceptron to learn nonlinear maps. It therefore renders the model more expressive. It can represent a larger set of functions. The quest for further increases in expressive power is what leads to the introduction of graph neural networks. To build more complex nonlinear functions, a GNN composes several graph perceptrons. It stacks perceptrons. It layers a set of perceptrons. More precisely, layer 1 of the GNN takes the input signal X and processes the signal with a perceptron. This perceptron is made up of a graph filter followed by application of a pointwise nonlinearity sigma. The perceptron is defined by the coefficients of the filter. We denote them by H1 to clarify that they are specific to the layer. The layer 1 perceptron yields an output X1 which becomes the output of layer 1. But instead of stopping here, the output of layer 1 becomes an input to layer 2. It is still the same signal, but it changes roles. It goes from being the blue output of layer 1 to be the green input to layer 2. Now, Layer 2 processes its input signal x1, which a second ago was the output of layer 1, with a perceptron defined by coefficients h2. This perceptron is a composition of the graph filter that uses these coefficients with the pointwise nonlinearity sigma. The coefficients are specific to the layer. The output of the layer 2 perceptron is denoted by x2, which is also the output of layer 2. Now we could stop here, but the output of layer 2 is now going to become an input to layer 3, as was the case when we went from layer 1 to layer 2. This is just a change of rows, a change of colors, but it's the same signal. Layer 3 is now going to process the output of layer 2 with a specific perceptron. It will send the output to layer 4, where it will be processed by another perceptron, and so on. We repeat this process a total of capital L times. This capital L is the depth of the GNN, the total number of layers, the total number of perceptrons that we compose. The output of the last layer is X sub capital L. This is declared to be the output of the GNN. According to this description of a GNN, a generic layer of a GNN is a perceptron that takes as input the output of the previous layer. 
Consider then layer L, which takes as input the output XL minus 1 of layer L minus 1. Layer L processes its input signal XL minus 1 with a perceptron defined by its own specific filter, which is defined by a set of coefficients HL. The result of this processing is the output of the layer XL. Agreeing that the input to layer 1, which is the given signal X, be reinterpreted as the output of the non-existent layer 0, the equation above provides a recursive definition of GNNs. If the GNN has capital L layers, the output of the GNN is the result of stopping the recursion after L iterations. This results in a function class phi that is parameterized by the shift operator S and the set of coefficients h1 through hl. To simplify notation, we define the filter tensor calligraphic h and write this function class as parametric on the shift operator S and the filter tensor h. The filter tensor h is the trainable parameter of the GNN. The shift operator is given prior information not part of the optimization. To cement our understanding of the definition of a graph neural network, consider an example GNN with three layers. We represent it with the block diagram shown on the right. We begin by feeding the input graph signal X to the graph perceptron in layer 1. This signal is also understood at the output of the non-existent layer 0. Within layer 1, the signal X0 is first processed with a graph filter. This filter uses the given shift operator S and a set of coefficients H1K which we will later train. This graph filter produces an internal output Z1, which we feed into the pointwise nonlinear function sigma. The result of applying this pointwise nonlinearity to the output of the graph filter is the signal X1. This completes layer 1. The signal X1 is the output of the layer. The output of layer 1 is now fed as an input to layer 2, where, again, it is processed by a filter with a specific set of coefficients h to k, which we will later train, to produce an output c2, which we feed to a pointwise nonlinear function, to produce the signal x2. This completes the layer, and x2 is declared to be the output but the output of layer 2 is now fed as an input to layer 3, where it is processed by a filter with trainable parameters H3K to produce internal output C3, which we process with the pointwise nonlinear function sigma to produce the signal X3. This completes layer 3. Since this is a GNN with three layers, the output of layer 3 is declared to be the output of the GNN. If the GNN has more than three layers, the process of transmuting layer outputs into layer inputs would continue until we reach the final layer. In any event, we denote the output of the GNN as phi of x, s, and h. In this notation, x is the input signal and s is the shift operator, which we assume given. The filter tensor H groups all of the filter coefficients. This is the trainable parameter of the GNN.